So I was in a rap group and we were having practice at one of my homeboys' house, a guy named Brandon Majors. There's a yeah. reason why I said Brandon Shout Majors. Shout out to Brandon. Okay. So we was at Brandon Majors' house and you know, he was, we was I was there and then I saw two turntables and I was like, can I get behind him? He was like, yeah, go ahead. So I was messing around, messing around for like 30 minutes an hour and you know, nobody showed up for practice. So he was like, man, I gotta go. I was like, okay. So I left, I said, hey man, how'd I do? He said, you were terrible. <laughs> but if you buy some equipment, I'll teach you. <laughs> Johnny Carson, Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> Here's Pretty Ricky. If you alive, subscribe. I like that, what you just said there. Here's Pretty Ricky. If you alive, subscribe. As I always say, man, I wanna appreciate all my people. Y'all always tuning in. Y'all been, sh been sharing me lately, I like that. I like the likes and I always tell you comment because I talk back. If you if you um, want to say something to me, I'll say something to you back and we can talk right there through the comments because I talk back. But today, man, I had to track this man down. I told y'all I'm bringing the legends on. Um, I'm bringing the people on with the knowledge to give you something, not just having a um, a, a spiteful conversation. We really talking about something on If You're Alive, subscribe. So, man, a legend, man. Y'all like my shirt? Shout out to Custom Tees, man, for my shirt, man. I love my DJs in Nashville. Uh, I thought about something, and I want to ask you something, Wiz. I want to ask you this. If I come to a show, and it can be money bag, yo, it can be 50 cents, it can, you know, it's it's the biggest show and we just doing our thing. If it's not a sound guy or a DJ, what we gonna do? Sit there. <laughs> just sit there, talk amongst ourselves. <laughs> talk amongst ourselves. <laughs> what are we gonna do if the DJ ain't there? Talk amongst ourselves. Go get some popcorn or hot dogs or whatever <laughs> snacks they have. <laughs> At, at the arena or the location. We're going to talk amongst ourselves. <laughs> and that's all we're going to do. That's all we're going to do. We Do DJs get enough credit for what they do? It all depends on who the DJ is. You know, so, I mean, just, yeah, you're speaking generally, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. Just, I'm just speaking. I'm speaking in general, as in, you know, all the rappers and stuff, they get all the credits and the producers and stuff. But the D, the party don't start or it don't end unless the DJ is around, right? That is true. Like, you know, for a DJ, we're the only person that, you know, if we don't show up, there's a big problem. Anybody else can call in sick, but if the DJ doesn't show up, Houston, we have a problem. Even the artists can call in sick. Yes, the artists can because, call in sick. Because if the DJ is yeah. there, you know yeah. what I'm saying? We can keep going. I put you into to some mess, uh, Wiz. I want to shout out to my Chicago people. Shout out to K-Moon. Shout out to D Glove. Okay. I got some Chicago people. This is what they said. They called me and said, uh, Ricky, um, we're coming to Nashville and we going we 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 breaking out DJs and we're gonna do a DJ battle. Ah. And so then what I told him, I said, I got one DJ. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna put his team together, however many, and then we'll go from there. And this some you ain't even know nothing about Wiz, but yeah, they obviously. talking about doing it at Willie B's. But like that'll be fun. Would that be fun? You know what I'm saying? Uh, what you think? Just on some fun stuff, and because they bring a big crowd. Well, I mean, uh, DJ battles. Okay, so here's the thing. Okay, so let's let's take a little history lesson. Now, come on, okay. Bro, so cool. history, history, history lesson. lesson. So so back in the day, you know, DJs, you know, they there was like scratching, mixing back and forth, back and forth. You put DJs in the same room, they're kind of gonna do the exact same thing. So I don't know who would really, you know what I'm saying, be the winner of the DJ battle. Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be more of a share kind of light. So, you know, I mean, you know, Shot Town's more than welcome. But they're gonna play Boosie just like everybody else. <laughs> so, <laughs> you gonna so, play Boosie. Yeah, yeah. So if you play Boosie, they gonna play Boosie and it's it's kinda yeah. it it don't kinda equal out is what you're right. saying. Right. It doesn't really equal out because, you know, like the South, you know, you know, if you're live subscribe, but the South definitely has something to say. So everybody across the country, you know, they jam something from the South, but you know, like that is where Southern DJs are the strongest in the South. Just like you know, East Coast DJs, uh, West Coast DJs, you know, they're stronger in their area. But, you know, 
That's it. But for you, Wiz. You know, y'all know Wiz crazy. Wiz just a we'll be we'll be talking to Wiz. Wiz will act like he don't hear us. The other day, Wiz threw out a, a picture, said, "Here, y'all." Here's me with hair. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, you know I remember those pictures. How many years we've been asking you for that yeah, picture? Yeah, 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 yeah. With you just decided to give it to right, us. Right, like right, You right. were just going through something that week or something. Well, no, so what happened was, that, <laughs> that was a picture from college, actually. Okay. And somebody sent it to me because it's in the yearbook. Mm -hmm. And they sent it to me, so I decided, you know what, let me just post a picture. Share, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What did, Wiz, with you being the DJ that you are, where did it start at till you said, I'm just going to be a DJ? How does that come about? Well, okay. <laughs> Funny thing, okay? You know, I was a rapper. I see. I didn't know. I was Ooh, a rapper. When I, history lesson. When I first started, <laughs> okay. when I first started, I was a rapper, okay? Uh, you know, we're not going to linger on the age, but, you know, I was at the age when the word ice was hot. Okay. So, you know, I mean, before I was C Wiz, I was Icy. You, you, okay, so I was icy, you know, when the word fresh, deaf, whack, rock to the break of dawn, all that stuff. So anyway, so, you know, I was in a rap group and then another group. So I was in a rap group and we were having practice at one of my homeboys' house, a guy named Brandon Majors. There's a yeah. reason why I said Brandon Shout Majors. Shout out to Brandon. Okay, so we was at Brandon Majors' house and, you know, he was, we was, I was there and then I saw two turntables and I was like, can I get behind him? He was like, yeah, go ahead. So I was messing around, messing around for like 30 minutes an hour and, you know, nobody showed up for practice. So he was like, man, I got to go. I was like, okay. So I slept. I said, hey, man, how'd I do? He said, you were terrible. <laughs> but if you Buy some equipment. <laughs> I'll teach you. <laughs> he said you were playing on it. I, I, I didn't know what I was to doing. Do it. it was terrible. Yeah. So anyway, the point is, uh, he was like, if you buy some equipment, then I'll do it. So what happened at Christmas? You know, my parents bought me some uh, some Christmas gifts, and I just wasn't happy. I was sitting around moping. And, you know, they, my dad was like, what's wrong? And I was like, well, you know, I kind of, you know, this gift's great, but I want something else for Christmas. And I was like, okay. So he's like, what do you want? I said, I want two turntables and a mixer. So we took all my Christmas gifts back and I went and I got wow. two turntables, regular, no pitch control, and a mixer, a realistic mixer from Radio Shack in Rivergate. Ooh. And, um, and everybody love Radio Shack. Everybody love Radio Shack. Everybody. <laughs> and, uh, and then I just kind of started my journey. So anyway, I remember going back up to Brandon's house and uh, he had a Sky Blue Nova. He's part of Park with Mafia. Anyway, you know, that's what we call everybody Park with right. Bordeaux, oh, yeah. Haynes Man Park. That's anyway. my east side. I, yeah, yeah. I'm claiming y'all east. Okay. They say north, but I'm going to claim it east. Okay, okay. You know well, what I'm you saying? Know, you know, we park wood. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, I knocked on his door and I was like, yo, I got some equipment. He was like, great. So he handed me a crate of records. He said, here, play with these. I got to go. So I was like, okay. <laughs> he, he ain't really showing you nothing. He showed me nothing. <laughs> so finally he showed me some basics and I kept working on it and working on it and working on it. And honestly, you know, it just kind of grew into that. And, um, you know, I, I, I was, uh, I went to uh, Davidson Academy, mm -hmm. first part of my high school years. And I start, kind of started DJing there. And then I went to Hunter's Lane. And, and when I went to Hunter's Lane, that's kind of when things really. Well, you in a dance group or something at Hunter's Lane. Oh, gosh. Okay. This, 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 okay. this is supposed yes. to be an exclusive. Yes. Okay. What, what was the dance group name? Okay. <laughs> yes, I was okay. in a dance group. And the name of the group was called the Brothers of Soul. The Brothers of Soul. So, Boss. Oh, B O S S. <laughs> the Brothers of Soul. I heard that. Yeah. My ears, I heard yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm yeah. Saying? It was the Brothers of Soul. So, and so, how did that, how did it go from that to the DJing, though, with dance, rap? So, go ahead. So, so I, I used to dance too. I used to be at Heartthrob. And I used to gyrate, you know, I used to gyrate like that. <laughs> <laughs> I used to gyrate on teen night, you know, it's a Sunday night. No, it wasn't teen night, it was Sunday night. Right. So at, at Heartthrob, and then, you know, uh, we would, you know, do all that. So I used to dance, but then I was kind of DJing too. So then, you know, I used to be the DJ and they were the dancers. So How old was you at this point, Wiz? You were really trying to get to the bottom line I don't line know, here. I'm just asking, like, because you was... I was like 50, I start, like when I start... 50, Okay, so here's the thing. So, so peep this. I made my first dollar when I was 15. So, Ooh. so here's the trick. So, just to, and we can get back to the timeline, but just kind of understand this. Understand that I have been in front of two turntables and a mixer every Friday and Saturday for at least 
20 years. Okay, now the reason why I say every Friday and Saturday because there was Wednesdays, there were Sundays, there was college teams. So you take all those other nights. Yeah. I've been in front of two turntables and a mixer every Friday and Saturday for at least 20 years. <clears throat> so, you know. So when you was 15 and you was doing that, did you have a job also? I did have a job. I used to work. You've been at, working hard. Well, with. I worked at Baskin Robbins in Madison. You remember when uh, Madison I, Square, Baskin Robbins? Yeah, I used I to work there. It. You know what I'm saying? So I would work there. And then like on the weekends, on like Saturday, I'd go to Heartthrobs. <laughs> and do your DJ. Yeah, just, no, I wouldn't DJ. I would just hang out. Yeah. You know, Jerry. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> Jerry. Yeah, and, so, and so where did the DJ... First, per hold up, Will. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this. Okay. When you started DJing, did you say, "Hey, I'm gonna be the best DJ I am"? No, I'm actually. So here's the thing. So <laughs> I come from a neighborhood park where had a lot of great DJs. Okay, and a lot of producers. Arlo, he was a producer. Okay. You know, what I'm saying we had Michael Quarter, uh, well, Icy Mike. Okay, so really the DJs were DJ White Knight. Uh huh. Okay, and we had, uh, you know, Jerry Davis. Yes, Jerry Davis used to DJ. Used to DJ. I didn't know that. Yeah. So okay. anyway, we had some DJs. So actually, in theory, I was the worst DJ out of all the <laughs> DJs in my neighborhood. <laughs> the reason why <laughs> I just outlasted everybody. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's the guy. That. That's the truth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I just kind of grew into it. So that's what happened. Was okay. So back then, when you first started DJing, were DJs like beefing and stuff like that? Nah. Have you ever? What's the difference from like we is like rappers and DJs? Because I'm just being honest with you, I've never seen none of y'all DJs beef. Well, I mean, because I mean, we, I, honestly, I mean, because I mean, our job is simple. It's not that serious. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So here's the thing with DJing. You, you, very few DJs can be a, a show DJ and a club DJ. Okay. You yeah. kind of mess around with both and then you get to a crossroad. I'm talking back in the day. I'm not talking like today's terms. So you got to figure out either you're going to rock parties or you're going to be on stage. You know, I chose to rock parties. parties. So that's how that happened. Uh, but, you know, I mean, we're just DJing parties. I mean, that's basically it. So it's kind of hard. You know what I'm saying? It, did you start in houses, though? I did start in house parties. Mm. Did a lot of house parties. parties. Yeah. Was they, when you do a house party, was that free or what, would you get no, paid? I got paid. That? No, I got paid. Yeah, uh, okay. I got paid for house parties. I mean, not much, but I got paid. <laughs> but you, but you, yeah, but you got paid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dang, who is, man? And so look, we so... You know, I first, all the DJs, they always like to work with the big artists and stuff uh -huh. like that. Who was your first big artist you work with? <sighs> okay. So we got to bring in New Life. Okay. So let's, I'll, let's go there. Let's go to New Life. Okay. Let's, let's talk New Life. Because, so here's the thing. So first of all, you know, uh, don't know if anybody sees this, but you know, shout out to Pistol. Okay, because Pistol did a very, 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 very interesting post. Okay, Pistol's a man of few words, but when he talks, we listen. Real quick, because I don't want to forget this. Okay. And we're we going to talk about New Life, and this is about New Life. Okay. Who sold more records locally in New Life than anybody? Who that fresh? Woohoo! It's all true, boss. It's all true. It sold a lot of records. So well, the, what what would you say that they was just selling out of New Life, as in uh, on the weeks? Lee, I, if I, now I could get this wrong, no, don't. Yeah. They, they were I could. I mean, it's been a long time. Yeah, they were probably selling. Oh my god, the numbers were ridiculous. Like maybe twelve hundred CDs, Woo! cassettes, cassettes and CDs. Yeah. Let's say between eight and twelve hundred a week. They were making ridiculous amounts of money. Wow. Yeah. So what made you even with being a DJ go to New Life? Well, okay, so you you gotta remember, I'm not much uh younger than hip hop is or older or whatever. I'm I'm just, you know, me and hip hop, you know, we're kind of hand in hand. Yeah. Okay. Most so 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 you know, New Life was the just like uh Pistol said that New Life was the store. So I went there, I went and hung out at the record store. You know, I hung out, I hung out, and then you know, went to high school, I always go to the record store. Oh, yeah. Went to college, would come home every weekend. Lee, it got to the point, and I love Lee so much for this. He used to give me, he used to let me pick like two or three CDs 
just to take in school. So stay in school, hear some music. You don't have to spend money on music. So, you know, new life has always been in tangent. So here's the thing. Graduated from college, walked across the stage, and went to work at new life. Mm. Yeah. That's so it. you think uh, you got a little more popular as a DJ at new life? Well... Yes and no. So here's the thing. A lot of this is by default. You got to remember a lot of things that happened. This is the blessing about being in this part of hip hop. We never had a plan. Mm -hmm. So everything that happened, I just kind of, you know, here's the thing. Let me before I do think that New Life had a lot to do with the popularity. Whole I, lot to do with the popularity. I'm just, that's what I'm just asking. But I'll say this. I will say this. I know a lot of DJs that are great. They're even better than me. But the difference between me what and... What makes a DJ better? And, and I want you to keep... But what, skill, what makes skill, a, skill, talent. You know, I can't scratch. Okay. I can't scratch. I can rhythm scratch, but I can't scratch, scratch. scratch. So anyway, the, the thing that makes me different than anybody else, especially with my age group, is I, I lived all the music. Mm. So I, I'm more of a DJ that can probably help you remember some of those. You got to remember, I remember when Luke... Was here, yeah. You yeah. know, I remember when you know, Kevin D come, Kevin D come, Kevin D come, and everybody was gyrating on stage. You know, what I'm we gyrating the night, we gyrating, we gyrating. Yeah. I'm gonna regret this. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, everybody was gyrating. So anyway, so like I remember that. I remember when Tupac came. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I remember Easy E. Like you know what I'm saying? Like uh, Master Tupac P. came to the Malibu, right? Tupac, or was it the uh, Tupac uh, did come to the Malibu? Or but what level of uh, was it uh, downtown, the Mix Factory? Too. No, he came to okay. Malibu. Okay, Tupac came Malibu. to Malibu. Okay. UGK first came to Malibu during the Riding Dirty Days. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people came to Malibu. Double, yeah. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so all those, so I lived all those songs. I lived everything. So, you know, if you're, you know, you know, 30 up, then I could probably, you could probably associate because that's the difference. I just remember the songs. Yeah. That's probably the difference. Yeah. And so now with, with Wiz, when you go into these clubs, are you still kind of going with your old swag or are you moving towards like, oh, I got to play a little bit of... Well, okay, so here's the thing. The good thing about our age group is the new stuff has to be like really, 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 really big for us to, you know, play it. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Nobody wants to hear the song that came out 10 minutes ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, you know, we don't know it. You know what I'm saying? And then with clubs, everything's about familiarity. So yes, you know what I'm saying, like And then and then real quick, for Wiz, like it seemed like Wiz, you used to get booked all the time. Mm -hmm. But now it's like you're getting booked even more. And I think about just like with the Snoop Dogs and stuff, they kinda hot as in and I'm not using y'all age, but well, as time as time go past. And so why do you think that is like now like Wiz, it's like you got a new birth. Like everybody, like we see Wiz, see Wiz. You know well, what I'm saying? Well, first of all, you know, giving all glory and honor to God. You know, honestly, you know, God really thinks I'm cool. I guess, mm. and I appreciate that more than anybody <laughs> knows. Um, I, I guess you know, like our age group. You know what I'm saying? I, I think our age group, like I guess, when you get thirty and up, like when our folks were thirty and up, like now that life is starting to slow down, they want to stay home and do all the other stuff. And like we're the new generation, so we're the first of our kind. You got to remember, we're the first age to have day parties and night. You know, you see what I'm saying? And 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 do all this and do all that. So we're excited by it. So that so that's probably what it is. Is that we, like I said? You know, hip hop never had a handbook. We just this this evolved into something, and this is just part of the the evolvement. Do you think like you kind of moved uh, with the the kind of I age crowd with like okay, I'm gonna go and start doing day parties other than all night. Well, so <clears throat> here, here's the thing, I gotta say this, okay? So I have a business partner, okay, a guy named Daryl J. Okay, shout out to my dog Daryl J. Shout out to Daryl J. Shout out to okay? my dog Daryl J. Let's unpack Daryl J. It has always been C Wiz and Daryl J. J. Daryl J and C Wiz. And you know what's so funny? Now listen. You Where did that relationship come from? Okay, Just so, so here's the C Wiz and Daryl J because it's it's like now it's like if you see it's it ain't no, it you it, it's always been like that, but now it's like C Wiz and Daryl J. Yeah, C Wiz and Daryl J. So so you know, the 30 and up movement with C Wiz and Daryl J, you know, that's C Wiz and Daryl J. You know, but Daryl J really, really handles the 30 and up part. So here's yeah. the thing. And and listen, no names. No names. We will not names. But me and Daryl J started throwing parties back in the day 
because if we were making like two hundred dollars for a gig, right? Mm. And I asked for fifty dollars more, and they said no. Woo! So 50, I said fifty dollars. I said, can I get fifty dollars more? Maybe a hundred dollars, fifty dollars more? And there, and I said, man, I said, F it, we got, we just gonna throw our parties. And that's what happened. So the first party we re- me and Daryl really threw was at the Palladium. Mm. We threw it at the Palladium. Shout out to the Palladium. That yeah. was the best. One that was the, the best, best thing. Club yeah. Ever. You know. Yeah. What I'm yeah. So so we threw it at the Palladium, and, and we talked about two hundred dollars. So that's yeah. a long time ago. So, so, yeah. So think you about this. Saying? If they would have gave me fifty dollars, I probably would have shut the fuck up. <laughs> I probably would have. I would have just shut up. Back. So so anyway, me me and Daryl did that. So and, and then on top of that, even with the mixtape game, you know, I was selling mix CDs, and I told Daryl, Daryl, you need you need to try the mix CDs. I said you're on the radio, this, that, and the third. He said no. Nah. He tried it. He just took a chance. Like we've always taken it. Like if I see something, he'll move on. Mm-hmm. So and we've done very very well mm-hmm. just trusting each other's instincts and hearing each other. So anyway, all that to say is that the day party was Daryl's idea. Why do you think the radio station always keeping CWIZ around and CWIZ mixes? Well, 92Q, and well, first of all, it's because that was I, 92Q. Shout out to 92Q and it, it, Kenny Smooth. So Kenny here's Smooth. here's the thing. He'll be I'm, on here. He will. Next, yeah, 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 okay. Kenny Smooth to me, okay, is probably the greatest programmer direct program director I've ever seen. You know why? Because he'll tell you he remembered me before. You know, like when I when I was on the road with with, with doing things with Three Six Project Pat and all those, things. and we finna talk about them. We are gonna talk. But about hold it. up, and let, let me ask you this before you go here, because I want to stay right there with Kenny Smooth. Okay. Well, I was okay. Did he deserve that flat? What he just got, and why wasn't C Wiz on the fifty year anniversary? Okay, this is the funniest thing. You ready? So I'm ready for it. You want to know why C Wiz on you. wasn't on the fifty for Nashville? <laughs> why? You want to know why? <laughs> why? I had a wedding. <laughs> I had a DJ wedding. I had a wedding to DJ. That was it. I had a wedding to DJ. But was you at least invited? No. But it's fine. Like, here's the thing. Like, like here's the thing. You got to remember something. Okay? Like, things don't really bother me like that. I know, but you know, it bothered us. But but here's the thing. Like, that, but no. Like, here's the thing. Like, I, I, I respect anybody and what they do and how they do it. Okay? Honestly. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And here's the thing. I do a lot in the city. You see what I'm saying? Okay. I do a lot. And, and, and you know, I hold this city in high regard. Love this city to death. Nashville's been not good to me, amazing to me. Love Nashville. Man. Okay. Love Nashville. So they've been amazing to me. So, like, I don't, you know, I mean, a stage like that is nice. But do you ever think about this, we is real quick? Just in a wider sense, I'm thinking. You have kept the party going since 15 years old. Yeah, I've tried. The party is still going today. I, I still continue the to try. The Seawiz party is still going going today. And, like, you know, we always I, – I don't even really give out flowers like that because that ain't my thing. And I like to give out props and stuff. But we is – you done kept this party going and this train – is still, you know what I'm saying, going. And so that's why we was like, we see, what's his name, Freddie O'Connell? What's it up there? And I'm like, and we see, we, it, don't, what Dola White said? Dola White said, see, we should have a statue. I'm humbled by that. Thank you, Dola White. <laughs> Love you for What it. do you feel like you deserve, though, Wiz, just being, we, you, you, so in it, your mind? So here's the thing. Here's the thing. I deserve, so, so I guess the thing for me, and, and, and here's the secret. Here's here is the secret to why, you know, I believe me and Daryl J or even me myself has been able to stand the test of time. Rule number one, never turn your back on the city. You turn your back on Nashville, Nashville will turn their back on you. Quick. Do not do that. Woo. Do not. Say that one more time, will you do please? Do not turn your back on Nashville ever in life. If you are from here, you let the world know you from here. <sighs> do not. That is, oh my God. Nashville will show you a lot quicker. No, do yeah. not. So that's that's number one. Number two, number two, okay? If somebody walks up to you and speaks, speak back. Yeah. No matter, I mean, you know, here's the thing, man. Like, let's keep it all the way funky. You know, you catch me in the grocery store pretty often. Off the top. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay? I like 
being <laughs> able to hang out. You know, I'm a big runner. You know, I, I, I got a guy that I run with. We've been running together for like 10 years. Guy named Steve Brady. Like, I'll be running up Broadway or I'll be running Centennial Park. He'll be like, what's up, Steve? I'll be like, hey, yeah. I stop, talk, whatever. So, like, those are the things. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I'm from here. And, 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 that's that's really the trick of not the trick, but that's the secret. Just be human. Yeah. Yeah. Just be human. Just be accessible. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying, you know, like there's been some times that I've had my kids and I was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? It's but, a bit much. Yeah. But I still speak. Yeah, facts. And so, but um, and see Wiz, you want you one person, you know, they always say, check on your strong friends. Mm -hmm. You one person, I ain't never heard you complain before. Yeah. Do you have time to complain or do you have anything to complain about? Or Well, I have a lot to complain about, but, you know, at the end of the day, am I going to complain about it or am I going to figure out a way to get past okay. it? You know, there, there was there, there was a very famous line that, you know, that, that Pimp C said that, that, you know, probably has nothing to do with what I'm saying now, yeah, but, but, but it said, you ain't got to love it, but you're going to respect it. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty. You pretty, ain't got a little bit, but you're gonna respect. But you're gonna respect it. But no, to answer your question, yes, everybody has problems. Everybody has issues. Oh, yo, great thought. So, this is the real reason why I probably try to make sure that everybody who comes to uh, see with Daryl J, Daryl J, see with a party, any party that I have anything to do with, I try to make sure they have a good time. Peep this. Mm -hmm. Everybody has issues. Everybody has problems. You know, everybody has personal things going on that bother them. Yeah. If they're going to take time out and say, you know what, I'm 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 gonna step out for a minute. I need a breath of fresh air, and they're gonna come to a party, okay? And they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna forget about their troubles, their issues, their problems for three, four hours, one hour, thirty minutes, and I can give them a chance just to step back and forget about, about it. it. I I take that. I, I take respect in that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I go so hard because at the end of the day, I never know what that person is going through. I never know, you know, if that person's just singing that song just a little bit harder, rocking real hard. Like I don't know what they're going to, but but if 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 I can just let that go, yeah. if they can let that go for just those one or two hours, and I was I was the reason why they let that go, you know, then then my job is done. And and I put my I try to put my best foot forward every time I hit a stage, every time I hit a club. Every time I do anything, because like I said, like I never know what that person's going through. How do like with and, and with you, see, Wiz, and your family, like you have kept your family like low key for yeah. all your, <laughs> you. You have you have kept yeah your family low key for all these years. But how do they look at see Wiz? Because you know it's like. I'll, I'll, I'll be uh, come over here and be like, I tell, oh, I saw C Wiz today and we talked this and that, this and that. And so how's your family with you? Like knowing that this is freaking C Wiz. You're, you know what I'm saying? You ready? Way. This is great. Yeah. This is great. This is great. Come on. They don't care. They don't care. They don't give a shit. None of them. They don't, they don't care. They don't care. None care. of them. Wife, you don't should. care. Baba, don't care. <laughs> Kids, don't, don't care. care. Nobody cares. <laughs> just yeah, it's just me. It's just hey, his dad, he's coming in. Yeah, hey, yeah. kids, a lot older now, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, at, at one point, you know, no, they don't. They don't. Why have uh? Why have not wifey or anybody? in your actually family circle say, hey, I want to do this with you, see, Wiz, or I want to, like, it seemed like you just always kind of just been out there, it's just see, Wiz. Well, he, he, here's the thing, you know, um, when people are passionate about something, or when people have a passionate hobby, it's it's kind of hard to, uh, you know, you know, do the things that they do, especially, you know, on the level that they do it. So mm -hmm. you got to remember, uh, you know, the one thing, even with New Life and, and even bouncing back to the record store, like I was able to learn so much that I even took one thing that, that, that cringe, not cringes, but very few people nowadays call me DJ C Wiz. Mm -hmm. They just call me Wiz, Wizzy, because I do more than just DJ. So when I was at the record store, I learned how distribution worked. I learned how the CD manufacturing worked. I learned how to make mix CDs. I learned how to book parties. I learned how to do all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I, I do more than just DJ. So even when I see DJs doing more than just DJing, I tell them, hey, man, why don't you just slowly but surely take the DJ off your name? Because you're more than the DJ. Mm. So think about this. Like, I mean, even right now, you didn't say, I got DJ C. Wiz in here. He's like, I got C. Wiz in here. Yeah. C. Wiz. 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 
Dude, dude. You know what I'm saying? The gyrator. And, and so even with um <laughs> and even with with Pimp and Bun, yes, and UGK and working with those guys, why we we've said this for years. Why didn't we just go out with them and never come back? Just and I'm just gonna talk starting with them. Well, well, here's the thing, you gotta remember. So, like, you know, UGK already had a DJ. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. you know, and yes, you know, I did Trill Ass Mixes and that was an amazing thing, but you know, like them as a group, you know, they they had, you know, they had a DJ. Shout to WD. WD out of Louisiana. Uh, mm -hmm. that was their DJ. Mm. Probably, but, and, it still is, actually, because he was mm. on the verses. Mm. Yeah. But I mean and, and but just working with them, how was it like? It was I'm great. just with 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 pimp and everybody want to work with pimp like and see Wiz is the guy. <laughs> you know well, what I'm well, saying? So so what happened was and, I mean and, and we could do another, you know, if you're alive, subscribe right. on okay. how Trill Ass Mixes was made. Right. But what happened was the the long story short was, you know, when I did it, you know, I was talking on it and you know, I said my name and he was like, you know. We're gonna need you to take your name off because you know we're kind of going through it right now. Yeah. But Pimp said, "I promise you, I will let everybody know who made this CD." And that's exactly what he did. Because after mm. Trill Ass Mixes, that's when I did all that work with Three Six Mafia and Hypnotized Minds. I did the Project Pat Mix yeah, CD. That's what I'm from. And, the, and, 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 yeah, it, and so it grew from there. And I did the Goody Mob CD. There's mm -hmm. a Goody Mob Mix CD called Nothing But That Goody, and I did several things. Nice. So it, the Little John liked the whole thing, but it was all based on you know Pimp C's word. Did you ever have like thoughts of like just going on roll with uh like the triple six mafias and stuff like that? Or I would have I would have loved of... to, and I've done I've you know I've, I know I've, I know if you've done a lot, but just I've being done there, I've done you know mm. trips with you know I've done road shows. I've I've been you know these guys DJs you know on certain situations, um. Uh, but I mean it's it's fun, but you know like I'm gonna tell you like regardless anybody who's on the road, just think about this: mm -hmm. you're living out of a suitcase, yeah, and that's hard. That's that's hard. You're away from your family. You know, you're away from your life. You're on a tour bus. You're on a plane. You're in different cities eating random food. You, you see what I'm yeah, saying? You just ain't no kind of... At the end of the day, it's great, but, you know, like, let's not get it twisted. It's work. But again, and again, Wiz, when you first started, DJ, did you have any out plan or, like, or it was just, I'm just finna DJ... And did you have any big plans behind it? Or it just like, I'm just going with the flow. I never knew that things would end up the way they did. Mm. I never did. You know what I'm saying? I, I was just DJing. And it was just a thing. And honestly, DJing kept me out of a lot of trouble. You know, I know a lot of people got jammed up with certain things, but I just stayed in the house. So what happened was, you know, like, my mom, like all my friends would come over to my house because I would make tapes for them and all that other stuff. So in theory, my mom was like, well, yeah, I don't understand the rap because it was early, <laughs> but, but it's keeping his ass here. So we ain't got to worry about cool. it. So that's basically how, you know, DJing, you know, kind of. But no, I, to answer your question, no, I never had an idea, never had a plan. No. And, and then so even with uh, dealing with other DJs, like I want to bring up a DJ that ain't here now. But I just always put him on a big pedestal, Don Juan. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Where do you put him at in this Cashville DJ? You know what I'm saying? Don Juan was it was it, was, it, it was, was is still, you know still, what I'm saying? Okay, calm Don Juan. Light skin, good hair. Yeah, light you know? skin. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but no, you know, he was Buck's DJ, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that was very iconic. He I know he saw a lot and learned a lot. So no, Don Juan is great. Yeah. Don Juan is great. I remember when he was at MTSU in Murfreesboro, me and Daryl J with the bongo Johnny days. Like I remember all those days. So I remember Don Juan from there. And then so and 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 with we is being everybody's uncle Ugh. DJing, if you're taking five DJs out of Nashville and putting them on your team, what five you taking? <laughs> I knew you was gonna pull you, this shit. You, I knew you was gonna pull this shit. You gotta. I knew you was gonna pull. I knew you was gonna pull this shit. <laughs> you okay. gotta take. I, well, I, five, you gotta take. You gotta take your star five team and go on a mission. Okay. Wiz, they all love you to death. Ain't nobody gonna. You know what I'm saying? Take a fish to it. Well. Well, well, here's the thing. I I couldn't. Uh, here's the thing. The team would have to be based on me and Daryl J. Okay. Okay. So Daryl J is not number two. No, it, 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 C Wiz and Daryl J. So that's, that's one. one. That's, that's one. one. I, okay. I didn't want to give you that you one. Don't let get away with it. Yeah. Don't let I get away with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. C Wiz and Daryl J. Okay. We want an all star team. 
<laughs> Dolawite, I feel your pain. Oh, um, I feel your pain, Dolawite. This yeah. is weird. This is I told you to ask some weird shit. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of so many of them. I'm a fan of Crisis. I'm a fan of... Uh, ah. Crisis, that's two. I, no, I'm a fan of <laughs> Crisis, yes. I'm a, fa I'm a fan of Brian D. That's three. Uh, that's let's see. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Dolo White. I mean, that's I'm... Well, a, wait, it's no, I'm a fan of Coop. I'm a fan five. of Broad Tools. That's I'm a fan six. of Wet. That's I'm a fan of DJ baby. Seven. Oh, no, weird. I'm a fan of Reggie Ridge. No, I'm a fan of LJ. Yeah. I'm a fan of Lil... I'm a fan, you know what I'm saying? There's a million and one DJs out here. Okay? I'm a fan of DJ Spade. I'm a fan, oh my God, DJ Spade, DJ Curious. Like, I'm a fan of all these guys. It's just, it's... it's five. So uh, to answer this, listen, DJs, there's not five. There's like 25 that I would take on the road. Bro. I can't. But I will say this. It, it has always started, and it, it continues to be C-Wiz and Daryl J first. Oh, I mean, wow. because we've done so much. I, I cannot, not honestly, like, I have to aggressively back down from the whole top five. Okay. Yes. You're going to get my ass handed to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you're going to get my ass handed to me. I tried. You know? I tried. No. Hey, Wiz, this is what I want to ask you. Like, yeah, who up? inspired you, like, for your style and what C Wiz actually do? Okay, so here's the thing. What, 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 what you need to know is that there's two DJs that everybody in my age, you know, look up to. It's two. It's Jazzy Jeff, Kid Capri. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So what happened? Two happen of the greatest. Two of the greatest. So not not to put any date on myself, but what happened was I was doing street promotion for Def Jam. Mm -hmm. Okay. Shout out to Johnny Walker. Okay. Johnny Walker. And I mean, she, that's her name, Johnny Walker. She worked at Def Jam and she gave me a street promotion job where I passed out cassettes and CDs and everything. And I had so my you little. you been through Def Jam. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was a street promo. It was street, yeah, it was street gig. Yeah. So anyway, had Not my... nothing too big, but big no, enough. No, no, street gig. <laughs> had, a, had a rap t shirt. It said yeah. REL, Rush Associated Labels, right? So anyway, she said, I'm going to get you. Two tickets to the Def Comedy Jam. Def Comedy Jam came to T-Pac. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, I, I had never gotten free tickets before. So, like, the show started at, like, 7, right? So I was there at, like, 3 o'clock trying to ask for free tickets. So <laughs> they were like, well, we don't have tickets. We don't know nothing. So I called her. She was like, well, you know, the tickets kind of... I've never had free tickets before. I was a kid. I was, like, 19, 18, 19. So anyway, I was in there, and I was watching... And you remember Def Comedy Jam, Kid Capri used to DJ. Before so, yeah. yeah, so so he was warming up. So Kid Capri was DJing. And we were in the in, in T-Pac, and I had never seen a crowd so hyped before. He had everybody on their feet. And I remember I was on the first floor, the last row, and I was watching him. And like metaphorically, he was taking the crowd and he was squeezing them. And he was squeezing them. He was squeezing them. Every time he drives, like, oh. Oh, oh, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I was sitting there like this, like I was holding my breath. All of a sudden, he, he just did, 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 and he dropped Michael Jackson. I watched it back and went, dun, 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 dun. Crowd lost it, and a tear rolled down my face. <laughs> I said, You cried. God. Fucking God. Mm. Dude, oh my God. So, like, you know, I learned a lot of, like, you know, a lot of DJs, you know, they don't really talk. So I talk and DJ and, you know, I mean, I got the blueprint from. Is that more of like crowd control too with like, can you kind of tell like when you dropping those records, like how to get the crowd? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's reading the crowd, crowd participation. You know what I'm saying? And it, it just kind of, it, it kind of warms the mood. You see what I'm saying? So you would give, again, if you send your top DJs, you will give it Jazzy Jeff and Kid Capri. Kid Capri. Okay, I, I finally mean, got he, him to answer a question. Well, I finally got, 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 got an answer. I finally got a question. I finally got an answer. You know what I'm saying? That's uh, like, like, like Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody loves Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Right. You yeah, see what I'm saying? Definitely. Everybody loved Kid Capri and Jazzy Jeff. So that was a safe answer. That was, Where to that go, Ricky? Was, that was a safe answer. I, I finally got an answer. <laughs> and so, look, and so we, like, with you being, being the big dog and artist and what does it take the DJ to play the artist music from your own city? Well, first of all, it, it takes, well, first of all, it has to, how can I say this? This, 
regardless, there's some etiquette that has to be addressed first. Mm -hmm. We're not even going to talk about how the song sounds, okay? okay? But huh. if I'm right in the middle of DJing and you're walking up to me, like I'm in the party, you're like, yo, play my shit. I'm like, yo, like, I got to review your stuff first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have a lot in Sensations. <laughs> <laughs> sensations gone. Yeah. Shout out to Sensations. That's why I said it happened a lot in Sensations. It happened a lot in Sensations. So you got to do that. But first of all, you know, I got to listen to the song. Mm -hmm. Okay, if the song's jamming, then, you know, I mean, we're going to give it a spin. Period. Point blank. Who are the artists that see Wiz really happy and never had to ask for no music, but trusted if they were sending music, it, would, it, it is what it was? From back in the day? From just your DJing. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, the big dogs, definitely, you know, we could start with, from back in the day, Fresh, Pistol, <clears throat> Kwani, Haystack, uh, of course, uh, Lido, of course, Paper, Buck, uh, uh, you know, uh, Jack Zane, get your mob on. You remember that? You remember that? Jack Zane, get your mob on. Get, get your mob on. on. Get, get your mob on. on. You know, respect this. You see the chain in the necklace. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but, but but I'm saying, like, what's your relationship with the artists and stuff we is over over the past years? Like the pistols and cool daddy fresh, what would you would say? Yeah, I think we're great. Okay. I think we're beyond good. I think we're great. Nothing but love and respect for a lot of these guys. I have a lot of love and respect for them, and I can honestly say that they have a lot of love and respect for Most me. Definitely. Most definitely. You know what I'm do. saying? Like, that's it. They just have a lot of love and respect. It's just, it's mutual. What make all the DJs like see with more than like everybody? You think? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe because, I mean, you know, maybe, maybe because I just kind of, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I never really thought about it. <laughs> Damn it, Ricky, that's like, a good I'm, question. Like, you know what I mean? Because everybody, you know, look up to Wiz. I look up to Wiz. It's just my own little person. Yeah. You know, Wiz, my, it's yeah. just our own little relationship. Yeah. But I'm saying when it comes to the DJs and the artists, like everybody always, Wiz, Wiz, every time your name is coming up. So, I mean, how does that make you feel? Like, is, is that is that an honor? Is that like a Nashville honor for well, you? Well, okay, so, you know so, so not to sound weird, but it makes me feel warm and fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love it. But, I, I mean, it's, I think it's just a lot of respect. Uh, you know, I respect a lot of artists. I think a lot of artists respect me. And, you know, and you know, it's like word association. So if you, if you treat people good, people treat you good. So I think that's kind of how we got here. Mm. You know, like, it takes a lot to get me there and and I very seldom get there. I've been there, but you know, other than that, you know. and uh Dola White talked about CeeLo. Yes. And CeeLo just with the and I never thought about that in the Dola White talking about how CeeLo created that whole R and B thing. Like, what's their relationship with you and CeeLo? CeeLo's cold. Cold blooded. So, you know, like CeeLo, you know, I, I was able to pass the baton to CeeLo on, on some certain things, mm. especially the first Friday thing. And, uh, you know, there's a, I don't remember, you remember the club in uh, Clarksville called Club Solis? Yes. Yeah. So, Come you know, CeeLo did some Club Solis. There's a lot of things CeeLo has done. CeeLo is amazing. He's amazing. He's amazing he, what he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, and his swag is, is you know. Have, have, have C Wiz ever thought about leaving Nashville and had any offers anywhere else? I did have an opportunity to leave, leave Nashville. Okay, I had an opportunity to leave Nashville. So what happened is, okay, there was this guy. Uh, his name was Bam. I don't know if you remember Bam from back in the day. Bam had a group called, I think it was Family First. Mm. Family First. And um, we were working on a deal with uh, UGK. So, not UGK, with Pimp C. So I flew to uh, Houston mm -hmm. and... um. Discussed the deal, got the deal, um, woke up the next morning, flew back to Nashville, pimp flew to LA, and of course that's when he passed. Yeah. I had planned, I had thought about it. I had plans on moving to Texas, and I was just gonna kind of build from there, but it didn't happen. So stay. Mm, so what's C Wiz idea on the best club in Nashville? And just, you know, Wiz, we've been We've been so fluctuated on these black clubs in Nashville. Like, what do you think we need to do better on building those back up like it used to be? Well, here's the thing. So, like, clubs are almost a thing of the past.
past, the way clubs okay. are now. Yeah. People, you know, more of the lounge, more of the vibe. You know, it's it's more about the chill. The dance floor is not what it was. Mm. And every now and then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll do some dancing, but not like to the point that we used to do. So I, I think we need to accept the fact that, you know, clubs are not what they once were. Mm. I understand that, you know, Vegas and Miami and all these these spots have clubs yeah. and or whatever, but we just, you know, everybody lounges now. Yeah. So I don't know if we'll ever get to a point where we'll have, you know, the club scene again. Um, the 615, the limelight club scene. Oh, you, my God. Do you ever, you know, it's crazy you say that because I don't see it. No, I don't either. Limelight was amazing. Limelight was historical. Do you think it's because of the real estate and everybody's coming in and asking for them? So, again, with, I want to I want to ask you this. What do you think about what's going on in Nashville now compared to back then with the new real estate and the people coming Nashville in? Nashville is a totally different is a totally different city, but you know to remember what it was as opposed to where it is, like there's so many options here. Mm. So many options. You remember back in the day like when you know we go out on you know Wednesday night for college night, then we might do Thursday night, night and then Friday, Friday night. Saturday, but S Sunday was the Sunday, Sunday was the was Sunday. The night. Sunday was the night. Sunday was the night. You know, baby, you gotta go to work. Oh, no, Sunday. no, 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 no. Skating rings. Sk Sunday. Charlotte, Malibu. Man. And what Bongo Johnny's? Johnny. When me and Daryl did Bongo Ooh, Johnny's. In, uh, Murfreesboro. Oh, my, oh God. my God. Mm. Yes. So what you think happened to where now it's just like we don't even really have a night. Well, the thing is, is like, like I said, the, the energy of going out and kicking it. First of all, we're older mm -hmm. and the responsibility has shifted. Okay. Dad can't go to college <laughs> night because he's not in college. He's fucking 40. Okay. <laughs> he can't go. <laughs> okay. Go. He got to pick up little Johnny and them. You know mm. what I'm saying? We got responsibility. So that's really what it is. The thing is, is that, you know, and I can only look at our age group. We have kind of like not aged out, but we've gotten to the point where we can get out every now and then. But, you know, we, we I mean, we're, we're, we're professionals. We have jobs. We have lives. We have things to do. Ooh. Yeah. See, with give me your top five uh, artists in Nashville. Your top five rap artists in Nashville. We well, need to know this. We need we need for C Wiz to give us because shit? C Wiz why the because fuck you, do you are the person to this ask shit? this. People want to know these questions. I gotta ask the question that people want to know. But here's the I won't have a show if I didn't. Well, here's the thing. Well, first of all, you know I, I'm a Starleto fan. Okay. <laughs> Let's let's okay. let's get the, okay. I'm a Starleto fan. I love the new guys. Okay, I love the new guys. But here's the thing: I'm going to stick with the the old school. Okay, okay? fair enough. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I mean, I liked uh, everything that Buck has done. You know, I liked everything that Paper has done. I liked everything that Pistol has done. Mm -hmm. I've liked everything that Cool Daddy Fresh has done. I've liked everything that Haystack has done. I like the fact that Jelly Roll freestyled on my mix CD. I like the fact that uh, Boogie was popping. I liked the fact that uh, 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 Detay and Loke was jamming. I liked the fact. Yeah, ha! I liked. I loved all the fact. You're not finna get me jumped. You know what I'm saying? For get me jumped on a flea flicker. What are we doing? What are that what I'm finna say? What are you we doing? You know what I'm saying? What are we? Hey. This see, Wiz, you've been walking around here as stress free for all your life. You try to and change I the trajectory. You, have, you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man. You're like, nah. Hey. Mm -mm. Man, how I have loved Kwani. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Don't we, do that. We go get it. Nah, you get me jumped. We, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, dude. Yeah, man. Wiz, man, <laughs> I, I was really the people <laughs> was asking me to ask you, <laughs> and I guess y'all just ain't gonna get an answer for none of this stuff because I love everybody, man. Oh. I'm running for president, baby. <laughs> 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 vote for Donald Trump. I'm just playing. Vote for Wiz. <laughs> vote Jeez. for Trump. <laughs> no, but okay. So Wiz, um, oh God. 
what Nashville, what do we need to be doing? Um, give us some critiques on what we're doing in entertainment in Nashville. Consider all the new po- podcast guys and all the new guys that's rapping and all the new guys that's DJing. Like, give us some guidance on to have a long future like you because, like, it's like you ain't – you getting bigger and better, you know what I'm saying? Well, well and I, I humbly thank you for that. This, this, this one, you can get an answer. Okay, that's what I'm trying to. I'm just okay. to get an answer. So here's the thing. This is the trick. So the good thing about DJing, and now I see this in podcasting and everything. First of all, oh, and, and, and even in hip hop, I, I tell people all the time. You know, you know, when I did, you know, I used to teach music after school and all the other stuff, and they they say I want to be a DJ, I want to be a rapper. So what I'm saying is. Let's let's go with this. Well, two parts. I want to say two okay. things. First Thanks. thing for you is, or for any DJs, or if for anybody, there's so many variations of a DJ. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Find your lane. Do not try to ride in somebody else's lane. If you are a vibe DJ, be a vibe DJ. If you are a show DJ, be a show DJ. If you just, you know, want to play, you know, at random bars, like there's so many variations of a DJ. Same thing with podcasts. If there's a lane, then just stay in that lane. Mm -hmm. Don't try to mix it up because the people who are subscribing and the people who are checking for you, they're checking for you based on what you're giving them right now. So that is what the secret is. If you just like, you got to do some soul searching you got to figure it out. Even with me, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, you're looking. Like, I tell people, I tell all the DJs right now, like, I'm more of an architect. I'm building a house for all these DJs to move into and remodel the house that mm. I built. You know, just like when I say shout out to Limelight. So what Happy Hour used to be, Happy Hour was more of an older thing. This is pre-Limelight. Yeah. It was more of an older thing. It was more of a more mature thing. You know, lots of blues, lots of this, lots of that. Limelight comes around and changes the trajectory. And you got people like 21 going to happy hour, like breaking their neck to to get in there. Yeah. Yeah. To go to happy hour. And nobody, you know, nobody ever had a happy hour that had a thousand people in there. It ain't been one since. No. So here's the thing. 500 people at Limelight was a slow night. 500 people. Okay? Five. Now 50 people is a slow night and 200 is a big night. Right. You see what I'm saying? So so that, so that so what I could tell anybody, just me still being around and still standing, and thank God I'm still kind of out here. You but was out here. Just stay in your lane, whatever that lane is. Okay? And, and please believe that anybody who sees me now just understand that, you know, you're looking at a finished product. There was a lot of hard nights. There was a lot of disappointments. You know, there was a lot of success and a lot of fuck-ups. So just just understand that, you know, I mean, it takes a lot of work. And I've done a lot of work. What's the power, see Wiz, of, like, working together? Because as I, as I see now and I see with the DJs in Nashville, like I said, for me, um, I know all the rappers be into it all the time. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I never see uh, the DJs into it. So what's the secret to that success on everybody being comfortable in their own lane? Well, I think I think that if if, if there's no real, I, I can't speak for everybody, but okay. I can't really think of a real reason unless one DJ took your controller or one DJ broke your equipment or knocked your computer over <laughs> so, or poured a drink in there and knocked the hookah over and said, fuck you, or anything like that. I don't know. But, you know, I mean, I think DJs are generally cool, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I mean, you know, this is my mantra. I got one job. You got one job, man. Mm-hmm. And your job, honestly, is to remember that you are there to provide a service and that service is to make a person feel good and forget all the bullshit that they're going through. That is your one job. And that's through music. So you need to play music or you need to play something to make people feel good for the time that they are around you. If you can, if you can master that, you will last a very, very long time. Honestly. As you being the greatest DJ that you are. Um, putting some big give, Jordans on these feet, buddy. Well, it's, it's, it, they, they big. Give me your coming in song and your going out song. Ah. <laughs> give, me, give, ah. give me your coming in song. Well, I play a lot of songs, but you know, there is a gear shifter. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm okay. trying to figure out. The the spice to it. The gear shifter. And I'm sure that if you've been to a Seawiz Daryl J party or <laughs> been to a lot of a, a, a party, you you know that wipe me down is <laughs> is probably Boosie. 
one of the greatest. No, it's probably the greatest, one of the greatest songs ever in life. Shout out to Boosie. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> me down, gonna get them every time. So here's the thing. Listen, everybody, <laughs> listen. DJs, listen up. Yeah, yeah, DJs, everybody, listen up, okay? There will come a time where God will send me a text message to my iPhone and tell me it's time to come home. Okay? <laughs> God will text me home. and say, my son, your job is done, done. here. Let's go and go. Okay? <laughs> First of all, I I'm sure the, the, the memorial service will be one for the books. Okay? We will play Wipe Me Down. Okay? We will play UGK. Okay? Mm -hmm. Break them off something. But I need wipe me down and break them off something and and probably a few other records to go in that casket with me. Mm. Okay. When I'm done, I think we're gonna take wipe me down with me. Okay. Before we go, Wiz. Uh, before we go, if you had one artist you had to pay for your last DJ set and you had to run that artist for at least an hour, who would it be? That's not fair. That's, that's not I have been fair. Asked a, I haven't asked a fair no. question tonight. No, <laughs> I haven't got one question. That's answer not fair. Tonight. You ready? That's fair. Jesus, if you alive, subscribe. Yeah, <laughs> if you alive, subscribe. Oh my goodness! If you, I haven't got one question answered. No. This is the first of many. No. This is the very first. Episode that that my people haven't answered one. Yeah, I'm like, shout out, <laughs> one. No, <laughs> wait a minute. So wait a minute. This is the last part. You want to play one artist like the whole night? No. Are you serious? No. If if you're like. I sure appreciate you for coming with, even though you didn't comply. I'm just and saying. through none of the interview. And I kind of knew this was going to happen. Is this going to work? <laughs> is this, I don't, is this, this, this going to even work? come out? That was Jesus, how I'm just saying. Is, Whoa. Is this going to, I don't even know if it's going to come I'm out. Look at you with, with more Yeah, because, you know what I mean? My job is to answer, to ask the questions. Jeez. Your job is to answer the questions. Yeah. I did my part, and I don't think you did yours tonight. Pretty Ricky, <laughs> a.k.a. Jimmy Fallon. Really? <laughs> really? Oh, my gosh. Do ask me. Do ask me geometry questions. So, listen, if you lost your leg in the war and Boosie was right in front of you, but you was in Atlanta, would you play Jeezy or would you play Boosie? I don't know. You know? <laughs> You know what I do? I choose God. That's what I do. Hey, I'm just saying, hey, man. Like, sh shout out. What? Shout out to Jesus. Shout out to everybody. Shout, shout out, out to Jesus. Yeah. Shout out to Jesus, man. Yeah, shout out to Jesus. Lord, please. Hey, oh my if you're alive, subscribe. Shout out to C Weird. Thank oh you for coming. God. Thank you for having me, man. Jeez. <laughs>